Hi guys, let's talk about Jesus. A lot of people, when they think about Jesus, they just think about the New Testament. Especially non-believers, people who are not Christians. They think that Jesus only appeared 2,000 years ago when Mary gave birth to Him. But is that true? Or is Jesus also in the Old Testament? Was He there? Was Jesus always there from the beginning? That is what we're going to look at in this video. And it's going to be a very interesting one. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. Now, just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here, my name is Daniel Moritz and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Please consider subscribing and also click that notification bell there so you won't miss any of the new videos and also all the videos that's already on here for free. I would really love the support as well. Now, was Jesus always there from the beginning? Yes, He was. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Remember this light versus dark, because we'll talk about this at the end of the video as well. It's going to be very interesting to you. Now here we see that Jesus is also called the Word with a capital letter W. Verse 14, And the Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelled among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now most of you who read your Bibles, you might remember that Satan rebelled against God and he was thrown down to earth, right? Let's read it. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. Now when this happened, Jesus was there. He was there when the devil was thrown down to earth. How do we know this? because He told the disciples. And He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Jesus was always there. He is not limited by time. Just because His role is the Son of God, it doesn't mean that He's not God. Just because He came to earth as a man, it doesn't mean that He's not God. He's 100% man and 100% God. You need to understand this. He is not limited by time. And that is why He also did not use the terms like past, present, and future, those tenses, when He said, well, listen to this. John 8 verse 51 to 59. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to Him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known Him. I know Him. If I were to say that I do not know Him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Now here it comes. Listen very carefully. Verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Wow, there is so much to unpack here. But a point I want to make is Jesus said that before Abraham was, I am. 
meaning he's not limited by time. And he used the same words that he spoke back in the Old Testament. Exodus 3 verse 1, King James Version. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. Now please take note here, whenever you see the angel of the Lord written in a capital letter, angel, that is pointing to Jesus. It is Jesus. Some of the versions, they got it wrong, but the um, New King James Version, the Amplified Version as well, they got it right. Now let's continue. Verse 4, So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So here you see Jesus establishing His authority as God. Now listen to this, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is His name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And He said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, let's connect this again with what Jesus is saying in the New Testament. John 8 verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. There is no doubt that Jesus was in the Old Testament as well. He appeared to certain people. Whenever the Bible uses the word, the angel of the Lord, capital A, then that is Jesus. Certain translations got it wrong. Also, sometimes he would be called the Lord when the Lord appeared. You need to get this. The whole Bible is about Jesus. Again, we see this in John 5 verse 46. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. Yes, the Bible is full of prophecies about the Messiah that would come, about Jesus. But Jesus also physically appeared to people in the Old Testament. He was also there. Let me give you a few more examples. Genesis 16 verse 7. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? Verse 13, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, I have also here seen him who sees me. Another example is Genesis 22 verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Verse 15, Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. You know, it is interesting here, Abraham, whew, it must have been really tough. God asking him to sacrifice his only son, and that is so unlike God. But Abraham passed the test, and God never really wanted to kill Isaac. But 
God, this is also an example for us, God would then do this with his own son. He would sacrifice his own son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Another example of Jesus in the Old Testament is in Judges. Judges 5 verse 23. Curse Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants bitterly, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Jesus is called many things. You know that from reading Scripture. And if you don't read Scripture, it's time you do. Read it for yourself instead of just going to church and just listen blindly to what the preachers say. There are good preachers out there. But there are also other preachers that you should not listen to. You have to read the Bible for yourself. Study it like the good Bereans daily. Jesus, as I said before, is also called the Son of God. And He was also there with Daniel's friends in the fire. Daniel 3 verse 25. Look, He answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son, capital letter, Son of God. You need to understand this. God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son are one. Jesus says in John 10 verse 30, I and my Father are one. Another example in the Old Testament, in Genesis, God did not just talk about Himself as I, singular, but plural, us. Listen to this. Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. The hour is not the angels, because we are not made in the likeness of angels. We are created in the image of God. Jesus Christ is in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. When we go back to the Old Testament, darkness crept into the world through sin. Adam and Eve sinned against God. And it separated us, humankind, from God. Because of our sin, we cannot have a relationship with God who is holy, who is perfect, who is pure. Romans 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Then God created the redemption plan, a way for us to once again walk with Him in a true relationship through His Son, Jesus Christ, who had to come down to earth to live a perfect life and to take all the punishment that we should have received for our sins, which is death, on Himself. He suffered took your sin and my sin on Himself, and He died in our place. So that now, if we accept it, God now looks through Jesus at us because we are now justified if we become reborn Christians. Romans 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the redemption plan, that Jesus the Messiah would come and die for our sins. And this redemption plan it was already put in place back in Genesis. Genesis 3 verse 15, God said to the devil, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Seed, capital letter, that's Jesus. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is Jesus that would be born from the line of the woman. You'll read in other, other passages and it becomes clear that this woman is Israel. Revelation 12 verse 1, And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. That's the twelve tribes of Israel. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven, that's the demons, and caused them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, that's Jesus, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations, with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to His throne. This is the redemption story, Jesus Christ, that will be born from Israel. The devil trying to bite the heel of the woman, trying to stop Israel from bringing forth the Messiah, the baby, Jesus Christ. 
Verse 13 says, Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. This is why the Old Testament doesn't describe everything that happened in the past, but it follows Israel because Jesus would be born from the nation of Israel. So the devil tried to stop him. This is a fight between good and evil, light and dark. Do you remember at the beginning of this video, I told you I'll talk about the light versus dark. So let's talk about this. The spiritual world influences the physical. And we get a very good example in the book of Daniel, how evil forces are behind wars. Listen to this. Daniel 10 verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Balthazar. And the word was true, and it was a great conflict. And he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. Let's go to verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. Now here it comes. Listen carefully. Verse 13, The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision is for days yet to come. When you read the whole chapter, you understand that Daniel was praying for 21 days and it was just silent. Gabriel had to come down to give Daniel the message. But then he says, the prince of Persia, that's a high-ranking demon behind the army of Persia, came to withstood him. So they were, they were battling against each other. And then Michael, the archangel, came to help Gabriel so that Gabriel could go and give the message to Daniel. There is a battle going on between good and evil, light and dark. We also see how the spiritual influences the physical. And you need to understand this. Let's go to Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You know, movies, TV series, and even games. With the entertainment industry, we all see this battle between good and evil, light and dark. Only the way that they show it is not really great, especially for young, innocent minds being brainwashed because we know who controls most of the entertainment industry. We here at Dilem Christian Lifestyle, we want to bring truth back into entertainment. If you want to support us, check out the video description down below. We just started a gaming company. There will be more information for you there. But when we look at this fight between darkness and the light, who is the true light? That is Jesus Christ, and He's the only one that can overcome evil. John 8 verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And 1 John 3 verse 8 says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Satan tried to stop Israel with other nations. Darkness stirred them, men from other nations, to hate Israel, to stop them from bringing forth the Messiah without even knowing it. Satan, his demons, working behind the scenes. And then even later, when Jesus was born, that dragon of old Satan, he was working in Herod to kill Jesus. But then, of course, the wise men, they were warned not to tell Herod. Matthew 2 verse 12, And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The devil's plan failed, but again, he tried to convince Herod to do the worst thing 
that he could possibly ever do to try and stop Jesus. Verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. Ask yourself, who is working that fury inside of Herod? And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. There are so many more passages that we can read, but I think you get it now that Jesus was there in the Old Testament. He's there in the New Testament. The whole Bible is about Jesus. Jesus is the Word Himself. He is the way. He is the truth and He is the life. And no one can go to the Father except through Him. John 14 verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you are still living in darkness, I want to invite you today, while you still have time, to turn to the light, to turn to Jesus Christ, because He came to save you because He loves you. Even now, as a sinner, He still loves you. Romans 5 verse 8, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, if you want to know more about who Jesus really is, then watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And before you go, always, always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you.